Hello. Hi everyone, I'm Sarah Squires, the Nurturing Coach, and this video is all about how to present a parental alienation case in the UK. Uh, it's following on from this question in my group. How to win over calf cast or deal with calf cast? Is it good to actually reference what you think is that PA that you think PA is happening? I use valid research, etc. I've been looking at Amy Baker's stuff to help my case or do I just give the court my evidence and let them work it out it's a really good question and one that really trips people up sometimes they're not sure whether did they say this is PA this is parental alienation or is saying that does it go against them so I thought I'd cover it in a video for you so these are my top five tips one understanding you know, you need to understand what and who you are dealing with. Do your own research, and I'll be giving you some ways to do that. Documentation, chronological fashion, how the situation went from good to bad to horrible. Psychology, you know, this is a mental health issue. You're dealing with someone with a personality disorder. You need to get an expert involved as soon as possible to be able to diagnose the dynamics presentation think about not just your evidence but also yourself and finally exposing let the narcissist expose themselves so my recommendations for improving your understanding so in my situation the absolutely best thing i ever did was read foundations by craig childress it explained exactly what my situation looked and felt like and validated what I'd been feeling and what I'd been saying was happening with the children for such a long time and also helped me to understand what the children were experiencing and therefore how best to support them. So to improve your understanding of what parental alienation actually is, I can't re recommend that book high enough especially if you are feeling like you're dealing with a uh, narcissist or a borderline parent i've also found dr todd grande on youtube explains narcissism and the complexities of the character really well um, a lot of people like dr romani i personally prefer um todd but a lot of people recommend so um Check them out, see which one you get on better with. Obviously, I also have my own catalogue of videos, which you can work your way through. Um, I've also found that Gwen Avched in um, the UK has done brilliant work on personality disorder parenting and the long term outcomes. Um, and I think that she is someone that um, you could reference. She um, is well record she's a works for the nhs foundation trust she's a consultant forensic psychiatrist so she really does know her stuff and you can reference her work in your case um or again just use it for your own understanding so documentation so as i said Chronological timeline will help you organize the stages of parental alienation. I personally recommend doing it really simply like getting a massive piece of paper, lying it out on the floor and plotting the major points. So usually with parental alienation, behaviors start in the relationship, probably even before the children are conceived. I know in my case, the children were conceived to be weapons. And so that is important in understanding my story. Um, it may not be what you necessarily give, but, but when you've been gaslit, then it's important for you to be able to process some of this. So I would start at the start of your relationship and work your way through to the now. You'll probably forget stuff. So having this timeline available where you can add bits and pieces is really important once you've done that that's when you can then start organizing your specific evidence to prove the behaviors kafkas have their own guidance on what they deem parental alienation to look like 
that's the arena that you're in. It, whether we like that or not, that is what, what we're dealing with. So go to it. It's on their website. Look at the, how they are measuring CAFCAS and um, how they're measuring parental alienation so that you can offer your evidence that fits their narrative of what alienation is like. Finally, we, as part of the Get Caught Ready program, have developed the evidence capture system, which is a way of organizing your evidence um, and categorizing it a lot easier. It helps with giving your information to your solicitor. So the psychology, um, obviously you're not a psychologist and you will feel like one after all the research that you do and all the reading, but you're not. And so it's really important to get one involved as soon as possible. Literally, um, I would I recommend straight away. As soon as a false allegation is made, um, as soon as they start demonstrating any of the alienating behaviors. And it is important to say at this point that the alienator doesn't have to be the resident parent. Alienation is a narcissistic parenting trait. And so it can, the non-resident parent can alienate as well. They do it in the set, exact same process of turning the child slowly against you, getting them to align with them, uh, become their emotional regulator. So it's just important that you are aware that parental alienation doesn't have to be um, the resident parent stopping contact. It can be the non-resident parent ramping up these behaviours. So as soon as you begin to recognise these behaviours, I would be asking for the expert. Um, it is under Practice Directive 25. Um, and obviously work with your legal team to present that in the best possible way. But ultimately, this is about the um, long-term outcomes for the children. It is important at this point to say there will be a cost to that. Um, but in my experience and my opinion, it will save you money in the long run. The faster, you know, spending five, ten thousand pounds now on a on an expert will save you easily five, ten thousand pounds down the track when you've been in the court ten years and spent eighty thousand pounds because you didn't have this diagnosed sooner. Um, but I do appreciate not everyone has access to that sort of money. If you have then go for it if not then like I say do the documentation bit if you can't do the psychology bit that that that's the way it goes you can ask for a guardian that's the um kafkas but person who is solely focused on the child so obviously you have your legal representation your ex has their legal representation or if you're representing yourself the guardian would be there solely for the children and they can um they can say that they uh, recognize parental alienation obviously it's not a psychological um diagnosis but they can so if you can't afford an expert i would definitely be asking for a guardian as soon as possible. Um, if you can have, um, if you can afford or you find the funds to pay for um, a psychological evaluation of the family, uh, you know, I do have a list of experts where you, you know, so do reach out and you can ask me for that. But you need them at the very least to understand family systems theory, personality disorders and attachment theory. You know, that's the very basic that you, that you want when you're reading through their experience, their resumes, you at least want them to understand that. Also be aware some people will say that they know what parental alienation is. That doesn't mean that they do. You know, you've read Childress. Hopefully you will have read Childress. You know what questions to ask. And you can do that, you know, you, you're with, within your right to ask those questions. This is, this is really important that you get the right person in. I also recommend that you ask the court to ask the expert to include really strong recommendations for next steps and the description of the long term impact of doing nothing that because I'm time and time again I'm seeing the courts go yeah we acknowledge that the ex 
your ex has alienated the children from you. But because they've done that for quite some time, you know, we probably won't do anything. We'll let you have indirect contact um, because it's going to be too distressing for the children. What they're missing from this is the long-term impact of not only losing you, their kind of buffer for this type of parenting, but also the long-term implications of having a personality disorder parent, which is why the work of Gwen Ashhead is so important because it will give you the tools to be able to say, look, these are the long-term outcomes. This is this is not healthy to leave them there. But if you can get the expert to do that bit for you, it will carry much more weight. And, and so make sure that I do recommend you asking for that. And then the final one is presentation. So obviously we've covered the evidence side of that, but the part that most people don't work on, but it's actually more important, is your presentation of yourself. You, in all likelihood, have been in an abusive relationship. You've been in an abusive relationship with someone with a personality disorder. You probably have complex um complex post-traumatic stress disorder your brain cannot do what you need it to do it is not physically capable of being objective it's not capable of having logical consequences because those parts have been damaged by the treatment and the abuse that you've um received and experienced and so you have to deal with that i understand that people rush to court i get it but by all means, rush and put your application in. But on the parallel to that, please do work on yourself. Get some treatment for your PTSD. At the very, very least, get some coping strategies for not so you're not triggered in the process because that's what your ex is relying on. Your ex knows you. They've conditioned you to behave in certain ways and they're going to use that to their effect by poking you and you'll respond with a fight flight freeze or flop i.e ptsd response which you can't control until you've learned how to um and so you will reinforce their narrative which goes against you it makes you less credible and it's all about your credibility so do not miss out that part Remember, no one will believe the story if they don't believe the storyteller. And you need to be credible. And if you haven't worked on yourself and you are presenting as hypervigilant, that can be misinterpreted as being paranoid. You're, you present as agitated. You can look at that like you're unstable. If you um, have a fight response, you can look aggressive. And, you know, you're, if you're being told or the narrative is that you are aggressive and abusive, it's going to look like, oh, yeah, they are. So you need to become believable, and that is through working on you. If you, The final one of this is exposing. What you really, really want is for the narcissist or the borderline parent to expose themselves as soon as possible. I always call it revealing the ghost, because if you've ever watched a horror film or an alien film, um, the person that first sees the ghost will go around going, oh my God, I've just seen a ghost. And everyone goes, you're crazy. You haven't seen a ghost. Or, at all. The more they see the ghost and they tell people, the crazier everyone thinks they are. The only time that people believe is when they see the ghost for themselves. Your work is to expose the ghost, get them to see the ghost. And this is done by triggering their anxiety response, which is either through their anxiety, uh, their abandonment fear, their inferiority complex, or their tra trauma reenactment. So for more support and to do the, those things, to do everything that we've talked about in here, we have the Parental Alienation Toolkit, so that will help you with all the knowledge. And uh, obviously Childress is a go-to, but there is more that you can read. Um, and the Parental Alienation Toolkit has all of that within it. And then Get Caught Ready will help you with your presentation. It will help you profile your ex. It will help you choose the right solicitor. It will help you manage your symptoms of PTSD. It will help you develop like pre-hearing code. So literally before you go into court, how can you manage the anxiety that all of us would feel in that situation? And lots, lots more. And that, that basically is a really reasonably priced 
less than that less than the cost of half an hour with a solicitor so i really do recommend them because they will save you money in the long run and there's more details of both of those available at www.thenurturingcoach.co.uk as always please do share this video with anyone you think is going to help don't forget to like and do comment below with your feedback or any questions take care everyone bye bye